<laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm Katie Lynn, uh, and many of you may already know me, either from Kids Church, or maybe I've tried to say hi, or because I'm your hairstylist. Welcome to UCC. We are so thrilled to have you join us today. And as you can see, something is different. Pastor Raja isn't here, uh, and I don't think I could pass off as him today, although I'm sure my husband could, but he tends to talk just as long as Raja, and realistically, I will not. Today is both exciting and a little scary for me. It's much easier for me to show up to church, sit in the back row, and listen, and take it all in, rather than be the one standing in front of everyone, hoping that something you say resonates. And when Raj asked me to speak, he literally said, hey, want to preach? Okay, cool. I'll be gone August 6th. You're on. And I'm sure any English majors would classify that as a run-on sentence, strategically constructed so I couldn't say no. But Raj has always seen things in me before I do, and I didn't think I'd get emotional saying that. He believes in his flock and is the best cheerleader. He inspires me to dig deeper and share exactly where I'm at. So here we are. When I realized what I had gotten myself into, I was faced with the same question that every pastor or public speaker has faced. What am I even going to talk about? Raj argues that everyone can share at least three sermons in their lifetime. So you guys are all up next. Uh, the three sermons are uh, where we've come from, which is our testimony, where we are is our personal growth, and where we are going, our faith journey. In 2020, while we were still having online church, many of you will remember I shared my testimony with the congregation about my journey with mental health, body image issues, and so on. And that was the period when God refined me and where I had built my foundation. In 2021, I shared with the young adults where I was at personally. I had struggled with porn and the effects of porn in my life, and I shared how I was growing through it and overcoming those challenges. And then that brings us to today. Where am I going? And where am I being called? Where are we being called? Today, I'll be speaking to you about mission, vision, and core values. One of the problems with individual Christians is we don't often have a defined mission and vision. It feels like we don't have direction or a clear path to get there. And if you've taken any type of business course, you've probably covered this topic before. But please bear with me, there is a point to all of this. So, what is a mission statement, what is a vision statement, and what are core values? So first to define what is a mission statement. It defines the purpose of an organization or business, why it exists, and what it does to achieve its vision. What is a vision statement? It outlines what the organization wants to be. It is a long-term view and concentrates on the future. It can be emotional and is a source of inspiration. It provides clear decision-making criteria. What are core values in a business and why are they important? It details the important and enduring beliefs and ideals of the leadership of the business. Values drive the culture and priorities of an organization. They influence the behavior of its members and provide everyone in the organization broad gu guidelines and framework for conduct. So, what are some examples of those things? First, we're going to dive into some well-known businesses, and we are going to look at how they define their businesses. And then we will dive into our own church's mission, vision, and core values. So it seemed only fitting to start with Starbucks because it was my first job. So Starbucks mission statement is to inspire and nurture the human spirit. One cup, wait, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. And their vision statement is to establish Starbucks as the premier purveyor I've been practicing that one, um, of the finest coffee in the world while maintaining our uncompromising principles while we grow. Their core values are creating a culture of warmth and belonging where everyone is welcome, acting with courage, challenging the status quo, and finding new ways to grow our company and each other, being present, connecting with transparency, dignity, and respect, and delivering our very best in all we do, holding ourselves accountable for results. Next up, Lululemon. Lululemon's mission statement is to elevate the world from mediocrity to greatness, which I think is like the most pretentious thing you could say, but yeah, oh well. Um, the vision statement is to be the experimental brand that ignites a community of people living the sweat life through sweat, grow, and connect. And their core values are personal responsibility, entrepreneurship, honesty, courage, connection, and fun and inclusion. 
Now, I debated my next business to be HomeSense. It would be like the trinity of where I shop, but I figured I'd put in a business here that the guys can relate to, so I chose HomeSense for men, which in my mind is Canadian Tire. <laughs> Canadian Tire's mission statement is to equip Canadians for the jobs and joys of everyday life. Their vision statement, as one of Canada's most iconic and trusted companies, we proudly provide customers from coast to coast with innovative products and services. From winter snow to summer sun, we are here to make life in Canada better. Their core values are integrity, honesty, and respect. Lastly, I want to finish off with Uptown Community Church. Our mission statement is reaching the lost and discipling the found. Our vision statement, it says, Uptown Community Church is a community of people committed to living out the hope of the truth of the gospel. To do this, we take active steps to know God better, fully understand his love for us, and find practical ways to express his love to others. And our core values are word worship and community, and we're going to dive into that a little bit more. It's learning the word and living the word. We are devoted to learning and living the Bible, to understanding it and allowing it to impact our lives. Worship and singing and service, we want to be a community of worshipers that bring glory to God through singing and service. Our Sunday meetings begin with singing and praise. Calling and caring and community. People long for deep, authentic relationships. We want to be a community that is calling and caring. We are open, inviting, and ready to receive those who are looking for us. We embrace and are ready to care for those amongst us. So, if we have a mission, vision, and core values for our church and the church, why is it important to establish this individually? This is what we're going to define today, and hopefully leaving here, I have given you the building blocks to create a clear vision for this next season in your walk. Because, yes, vision can change as long as our mission doesn't, but we'll get more into that later. So, why this topic? Honestly, I wish I could take credit for it, but I feel like from a little work from the Holy Spirit and a business mentor in my life, Kat Rally, I, I landed here. As a business and salon right now, we are working through these questions. What is our mission, vision, and core values? But at an education course I was taking in Toronto, the educator said, we must define these things individually as well. Ta-da, sermon idea. <laughs> Let's run with it. As I dove into this concept biblically, I came to three major thought processes. I found out that our core values come back to how God created us and how unique and different we all are. Our vision is the Holy Spirit helping to transform us. And our mission, my mission, your mission, is to become like Jesus. At our education, education course, Kat had recommended to us a formula to figure this out because at first it can be daunting. She said to first start with your five core values. Now as Christians, we can probably think of 30 core values that we should oblige by, but as you're figuring this out, I want you to think of the five core values that you feel like are important to your journey with Christ. Then once you have those written down, you hop into exploring uh, your vision. Where is God calling you? And what do you need to get there? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Our vision and core values, although they fully align with God, may differ from Christian to Christian. Again, I'm going to say that. Our vision and core values, although they fully align with God, may differ from Christian to Christian. And finally, what is your mission? I believe as the church, although our vision may be different, our mission is always the same. However you want to define it, whatever fancy words you want to use, we should all be writing down the same thing at the end of the day. Now, I grew up in a family of teachers, so I got to have some type of gene in here, and I'm going to milk it for what it's worth and hand out some homework today. So if I could grab Mitch and Marissa to grab those papers. There are pens at certain tables. If there's not, please share. Um, that would be wonderful. And today, we are going to define what are your five top core values. This is a sheet of 50 words, and I want you to initially circle 30 of them. Um, as you're doing that, I want it to be quick. It's just initially, what, what are your thoughts, your mind, what are they gravitating towards in those words? Um, then, after you're done circling those 30 words, I want you to circ circle 10 of the 30 or that you chose. And finally, when you are ready, choose your five core values. 
Take some time to do this. Um, you're more than welcome to chat with the people around you while doing it, and I'll probably give you a few minutes. Did anyone not get one? Raise your hand. No, everyone got one. We're good. Okay. We will have it online. So again, for those of you who were grabbing papers and not listening to me, um, I want you to choose 30 words. And that initial circling should be quick. So just go through it as you see something, circle it, move on. And then from there, I want you to choose 10 of those words. And then when you are ready, choose your five core values. That is windy. <laughs> I'm going to sit like this. Uh, as you continue to think about these core values are for you, I can share the ones that I ended up with. Now, some of them I feel like I've stepped into, and others I feel like I would like to more. Micah asked me that question as we were going around. Are these, que are these words that I want to be doing or I am doing right now in my life? And again, as I said to Micah, those 30 initial words, it might point out to you some things that you want to step into or ones that you already are growing into. But these are the five that stuck out to me the most. Grace, gratitude, bravery, growth, and community. I chose the word grace because I feel like it perfectly describes my faith. These five words are the words I actually chose for my hairstyling homework for the business, but 
I wanted to be intentional with the words I cho chose to correspond with my faith core values. Grace was a perfect word to describe my faith in my professional journey. Gratitude. Now, I must admit that gratitude is an area I still need to work on. Among the 50 words, it stood out as a reminder of what I lack in my life. God continuously calls me to have a grateful heart, and I want to embrace this value and grow into it. And this leads me into my next core value, which is growth. My aspiration is to look back a year from now and see the evident progress in various aspects of my life, personal growth, spiritual development, my relationships and knowledge. And to achieve growth, I understand that being brave is essential. Growth often involves stepping out of one's comfort zone, and that can be intimidating and challenging. In the past, fear led me to say no to many opportunities. However, I've started saying yes more often. For instance, I bravely sang at Sarah and Cam's wedding last year, even though it was last minute and out of my comfort zone. Thank you, Ken, <laughs> for accompanying me. Uh, though I may not repeat such an experience, I continue to say yes to other challenging situations. I say a lot, yes a lot more now to jumping into cold water. I hate it, but my husband loves it. And although it's uncomfortable and I usually dislike the feeling, I love being able to share that moment with him. And well, I said yes to today. <laughs> this is terrifying, uh, but I am up here. And I know God is going to use my bravery to further his kingdom, even if it's just for myself. And lastly, community. You guys have a big role to play into this one. I don't think I could be standing up here today if it wasn't for all of you guys. I feel very comfortable right now. Um, and I realized, I think most of us realized how much we needed this, especially over the last number of years. And so Mitch and I always say we have an open door policy at our house with a locked door because we live downtown. Now, why do I share this with you? Partly because it gave you guys time to continue to write and think, and I see you guys still working away, which is great, but I want you to think about how important it is to establish each of these. Take the time to delve into their depths and understand their true meaning. Once you have these values firmly rooted within you, you'll find yourself walking with confidence in the direction that God is leading you. It creates a solid framework for how to act and live out your life, guiding your decisions and actions in alignment with what you believe in. Now, I understand that this is just the beginning. It's not meant to be a set, rigid set of rigid, <laughs> rigid set of rules, and it's okay to be flexible in exploring other core values that might resonate with you. In fact, I, like I said before, I believe there are probably 30 or more essential values that we should all strive to grow into. However, this list serves as a starting point, a foundation upon which you can build a life of purpose and integrity. So embrace this beginning, and as you journey forward, let the, these values shape and mold you into the person you aspire to be. There are some things that I want you to think about as you write out your core values. Everything you say, do, and act should first be, be viewed through these lenses. If I was then to ask myself this, I would ask, is what I am doing right now out of fear or out of bravery? I'd ask myself, is this practicing a grateful heart? Next, do your core values align with how you're acting? Again, if I was to say that community was part of my core values and then made no time for human interactions, well, that kind of gives you an answer. Um, and if you, how you are acting is not aligning with your core values, does that mean I need to change my core value or do I need to change my actions? And if your core val values are really that important to you, you will make the effort to change in that way. Your core values are attached to how God created you. I mention this because my core values are going to be very different than, let's say, Mitch's, although hopefully not too much because I'm married to him. Um, and Mitch's will differ from Brock's, and Brock's will differ from Marika's, and you know why? Because we're all created so uniquely by God, and we are all so, so different. If someone is looking in, would they be able to define your core values? And hand in hand with that question, are your core values evident to this world? Again, if you want to take a picture of this as you continue to work through your core values um, to have a reference for. Psalm 139, 13 to 14 says, You made all of the del delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. And Ephesians 2, 10 says, For we are all, all, all God's masterpiece. 
He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I had a last minute thought as I was finishing up writing this sermon. I want to challenge you guys and myself to find a Bible verse that aligns with each core value. In doing so, I then want you to take time to memorize those verses. This is a homework piece for myself as well because I haven't done it yet. The reason this sat with me is because another statement that Kat had mentioned. She said, once you had defined your mission, vision, and core values, that you should be able to recite it. And then if someone asks, you would know right away. So the next time you're in line waiting for your Starbucks, ask the barista if they know the Starbucks mission statement, because I do know that's part of their homework. You'll find out later on that my, mission, my vision statement sorry, is a bit long. So realistically, probably I won't be able to memorize it, but and by the, probably by the time that I do, my vision will probably have changed. And I feel like this is a good way to define my core values and then in turn memorize them. And let's be real, we all need some more spiritual disciplines in our lives. So moving on to vision. One of the first things I think of when I hear the word vision is eyesight. Now, I've had glasses since I was in grade three, so I've never really known life without them. That is, until I take them off and realize just how blind I am. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we change into his glorious image. I have come to understand that as human beings, our vision is naturally limited. We cannot see far into the future or comprehend the entirety of God's plan for our lives. Kind of like how we were teenagers, we thought everything was the end of the world, and looking back now, you realize how untrue that was and just kind of have to laugh at that thought. It is in acknowledging this limitation that we come to realize our need for God's guidance. We may stumble in the darkness of uncertainty, unsure of the path ahead, but it is through the presence of the Holy Spirit that we find clarity and purpose. Just as a pair of glasses corrects our physical vision, the Holy Spirit places spiritual lenses upon our hearts and minds, allowing us to perceive the world and our calling with a new perspective. With God's divine guidance, we begin to see our vision, our purpose, and the path he has laid out for us. It is through this divine revelation that we are empowered to walk confidently in faith, knowing that God will lead us every step of the way. 2 Peter 1, 3-11 By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us a great and precious promise. These are the promises that enable you to share this divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In the view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patience and endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge and our of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted and blind forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Having recognized the significance of the Holy Spirit's role in providing us with spiritual lenses, we must now explore our own individual visions. Each one of us is uniquely equipped with spiritual gifts, and as Raj says, some of these gifts are ongoing, and some may be given in the moment by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to take this time to share my vision statement with you as well. I took a long time to write this out and to think about what it is and how the Holy Spirit is transforming me in my life right now. I usually cry when saying this, so I'm going to try to keep it together. As a hairstylist, my vision is to create an environment where grace, community, growth, bravery, and gratitude intertwine seamlessly. The salon and the chair before me are my mission field, where people, no matter what state they are in, can experience God's love through my actions and demeanor. When clients sit in my chair, I want them to feel a sense of comfort and peace. In this sacred space, I silently pray for each of them, seeking God's guidance for their lives. I pray for godly peace to overcome the chaos of their busy schedules, and I lift up their situations and hardships. 
asking for divine guidance and strength. Above all, I pray for a Holy Spirit kind of joy to fill their hearts. My hope is that even if they aren't aware of it, they will experience a glimpse of God's presence in their lives during their time with me. Whether they recognize it or not, my desire is to be a vessel of God's grace and his love, leaving them feeling uplifted and rejuvenated both inside and out. As I continually to strive to deepen my impact and my faith, growth remains at the core of my journey, accompanied by the bravery to embrace challenges and the gratitude to cherish each moment of this beautiful endeavor. Here is my vision statement. And yes, it needed to have a little bit of cheesy goodness in there, but make it your own. Your vision should tell a story of where God is calling you and how you are answering that calling. Side note. Don't get hung up on what is my calling in life. Where is God calling me? He is calling you to our mission statement. But before we dive in there, let's finish off with the vision portion with some verses that stuck out to me. 1 Corinthians 12, 25 to 28. This makes for harmony among the members so that all members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, and those who speak in unknown languages. 1 Peter 4, 10-11. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you will do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All power and glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Now, many Christians like to revert to talking about the co-mission in Matthew 28 as soon as, the word, as, soon as you say the word mission. I think it's great to talk about. It is part of the mission, but I don't think it's the mission in its entirety. I believe each of our missions as Christians is to become like Jesus, simply put. And the reason I put it so is because your mission statement should be just that, short and sweet. Just like UCC's mission statement is reaching the lost and discipling the found. With your vision statement, you're more than welcome to write a whole paragraph about it, like I did. Get creative with it. But if you could define what is your mission as a Christ follower in one sentence, what would it be? We will all have our own verbiage, and I've heard people um, say to love God and to love others, to know Jesus and make him known, to be transformed into the character of Christ. But whatever um, it is, find the verbiage that sticks out to you under the framework of um, to become like Jesus. Or you guys can just steal that. (laughs) That's okay, too. Um, perfect. Okay. First Peter two twenty one. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in His steps. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are His dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the examples of Christ. He loved us and offered Himself as a sacrifice for, for us, a pleasing aroma to God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Know, O people, the the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you. Do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And perfectly, I think it encapsulates it, 1 John 2, verse 6. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Now I want to finish off with this last piece of information. Your core values plus your vision equals your mission. Or better put, when the natural meets the supernatural, it equals transcendence. For those of you who don't know what transcendence means, I didn't either, so don't worry, we'll get back into that. And you obviously know that this is a Raj quote because I don't do math and Raj loves his equations. He did this, though, to keep it simple for me with only addition because that's what I can do. So as we have established before, our core values reside in how we were created by God. This is the natural. 
Our vision has everything to do with the Holy Spirit transforming us, the supernatural. And with these two things combined, we are completing our mission, our mission being to become more like Christ. Now, transcendence means going beyond the normal or usual limits of what we can understand or experience. It's like reaching a higher understanding that is beyond our everyday thoughts and feelings. And Raj defined it as um, outside of us, in short. When we add our natural core values with the Holy Spirit's supernatural vision for our lives, we create and grow into our mission to become more like Christ, reaching only a level of transcendence that we are able to experience here on earth. Again, when we add our natural core values with the Holy Spirit's supernatural vision for our lives, we create and grow into our mission to become more like Christ, reaching only a level of transcendence that we are able to experience here on earth. I feel as though this passage from Ephesians perfectly describes what we have talked about today. Mitch, can you, um, this is multiple slides and I can't read off of it. <laughs> Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility to, is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown away about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies and so clever that they sound like truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other's parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live so lustful, for less full pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God truly righteous and holy. Let us pray. Now, as every head is bowed and eyes closed, we do this every week, and yes, I stole that from the guy that I know. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do anything weird. I just want you to take time to reflect. As you are narrowing down and defining your core values, I want to, you to ask yourself, where do you see those in your life right now? And more importantly, where do you not see those things? I pray that you take these next few weeks to, to clearly define your vision and core values. And yes, hopefully we all can have the spiritual discipline to find some verses to go with it as well. Remember that once you have these values firmly rooted within you, you'll find yourself walking with confidence in the direction that God is leading you. Like I said before, these things create a solid framework for how to act and live out your life. They guide your decisions and actions in alignment with what you believe in. My prayer for you is to walk in godly confidence and in his integrity, that you may take active steps today and this week to become the person Christ is calling you to be 
and the person you aspire to be, that every day you become more and more like Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts for this time of sharing and reflection. Thank you for using me to deliver this sermon today. I am humbled by the opportunity to stand before your people and share your word. Lord, I pray that the words spoken here today have resonated with each person here. May your Holy Spirit work in their hearts and minds, guiding them as they define their mission, vision, and core values. Help them to discover the unique gifts and talents you have given them, and may they use them to serve you and others. As we seek to become more like Jesus, may your love and grace shine through us. Empower us to love one another, to walk in humility, and to live lives that bring glory to your name. May our actions be a reflection of your truth, and may we be agents of positive change in the lives of those around us. Lord, we lift up Uptown Community Church and its mission to reach the lost and discipling the found. Bless this church and its members, and may they continue to be a light in the community, pointing others towards you. Lord, as we leave this place, may your presence go with us. Lead us, guide us, and strengthen us in our journey of faith. Let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In your precious name, amen.